party. Hi, Jamie. Okay. Hello, Shannon. How you doing? Fine. How are you, Jamie? Good. Very good. Good morning, Casey. It's been a long time. How are you doing? <laughs> it's been a long time. It's been like six years. Has it been six years? Pretty much. That's when I started school and I got too busy. So it's been about uh, six years, yeah. Wait a minute. Isn't that one of my rules that you should never break? Don't let life interfere with guitar playing? <laughs> Are you just getting back to guitar? You, you were actually away from guitar for a long time? No, I went to school for a music degree. Um, oh, oh my God. Okay. I didn't really play guitar much there because there were so many requirements. I did voice and choir and stuff like that. But, uh, oh, wow. But uh, Boy, yeah, I'm gonna make you three years and then I started a new job, which took over my life. So I've been undisciplined and just playing for fun. Okay. This is my refresher. So you have a music degree, huh? Associates. Okay. Yeah. Well, you, was, might be, you might be smarter than me now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, if I need any help here, I'll let you know. I was like 35 years older than most of my classmates. <laughs> <laughs> which is fun. Oh, it must have been fun. Well, hello, everybody. A lot of new faces here. Yeah. Although I know I've had back and forth with a lot of you. Everybody hearing me okay? Yes. Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, we have like a show of hands of who had a chance to do some of the basic stuff about um, sitting and all that stuff. Everybody familiar with that? Yeah, a little bit. Okay. Because I'll move faster through that kind of stuff. But what I'm going to do, uh, what I want to do anyway, is check everybody's sitting position. Because that's where everything starts. So, um, you know, as, as far as sitting for practice, you know, one thing to realize is that the way we sit for practice is not necessarily the way you're going to play, at least all the time. When we play, we might play in all different kinds of positions. But when we practice, we want to be very um, strict about it and uniform about it because the difference between practicing and playing is when we're practicing, we're teaching our muscles, we're teaching our body, our fingers to make movements. When we play, we're using what we already uh, achieve. So the body learns better when the, the sitting position is such that um, we're able to be relaxed as much as possible. So do not practice in something like I'm sitting in here, okay, if you can help it. Arms really aren't that good. Practice in something like that folding chair over there or that little stool, which is what I use uh, when I go outside, okay? Um, let me try to get a look at everybody. Uh, let's see, Tommy look uh, real good there. Straight back. Madeline, I can't see your um, sitting position. I can't uh, hold the guitar for one more week after my surgery. Oh, I got you. Okay. But I don't have my guitar yet. Okay. All right. I'll give you a pass on that. Uh, Grant? Um, yeah. Uh, it looks good from what I can see. Oh, but so I can't I'm see. Trying to get a broader view, and I'm yeah, I can't see the lower half. I got too much of the top of you there. Yeah, okay, so let me try. How about that? That's good. That's right. good. So that's what that looks good for you. Very nice, uh, Rodney. That looks good. You've got a bigger body guitar, uh, from what I can see. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Chris Thompson, I can't see your lower part. Okay. Um, still can't see it. Is it possible to lower the camera down a little bit? Yeah, that should be good. All right, very good. Very nice. Jason, that looks good. Good. Rob, that looks good. Steph. Uh, yes, that looks okay. You got one of those traveling guitars there. It works. They don't give you. You can't rest your arm on the guitar so much with those. That's one difference with those traveling type of guitars. 
But as long as you try to keep your shoulder as relaxed as you can. Okay, Robert, that looks good. Dennis, you know, that neck looks rather quite at an angle. You might want to um, bring that down a little bit. Dennis, you hear me? Dennis? I don't think Dennis is hearing me. Dennis is... I, yeah, I can hear you. Oh, okay. But I think I'm getting this little message about my network bandwidth is low. I have a little connection problem. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, yeah, the guitar is looking a little too much like that. I, I would probably put it a little more like that. It's good to have the headstock about eye level. Yeah. Um, maybe if you move the uh, right leg out a little bit and got the guitar. Can you get the neck less vertical? You'd have to do this. See, right now it's like this. So you'd have to just move it more like that. Oh, you have one of those things on the bottom of it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, that makes a difference. Okay. Yeah. All right. Work with that anyway. Okay, Jim, uh, can you get facing forward with your guitar's kind of slanted back like this? If you can bring the guitar forward. Well, maybe it's how you're turned and you're sitting. All right. Um, it's still slanted back. Kind of like that. Oh. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, if you can bring it forward a little. I'll need it forward like this anyway when we do left hand because I need to see it straight on. Okay, yeah, James, so you're standing with a strap. Yeah, I mean, you, you can, it, it, the guitar's a little low as you're, are you sitting? You're sitting with a strap. James Ritchell? Yes. Okay. Do you hear me? Yeah, the guitar. Um, Generally, I don't advise wearing a strap when you practice. Uh, it's okay. a bit draining. I think, and your your guitar's too low. Your leg, okay, this leg here. Okay. okay this leg, so your leg is at that angle. It's, it's rather low. It, you want to be just, okay, here's, my leg is parallel to the floor. You want it up just a little bit. Yeah, because... Uh, Otherwise, it makes it difficult for uh, the left hand especially and for the fingers to get into the right positioning. Okay, Henderson, you look good. <coughs> good because you're a private student, so. <laughs> uh, Keith, uh, Keith, yeah, you have a strap on, you have it on the other leg. Um, have you tried putting it on the... The guitar on the left leg. Like this? Yes, like that. And your guitar is too low, and I would lose the strap. See, because when it's that low, see the, the thing about it being that, see, it has to be up a certain height in order for the left hand to come around and for the fingers to curl the way we need them to curl. So when it's very low, you'll find yourself going down like that. That's the thing. That's the issue. Yeah, that's a bit better. That's a bit better. Do you have a foot stand or something? I'm not with me, but I do have one. Okay, well, yeah, you should use it then. Okay, we want to raise, we put the guitar on the left leg, okay, and we use a footstool under the left foot to raise it up a bit. That's the most ergonomic position. If you don't want to use a footstool, some people will use something. They sell these things for guitars. You put it on your leg, then your foot can be flat on the floor, and then it still brings the guitar up. A lot of people like that, okay? So, yeah, that looks much better. That's much better. Okay, John Schultenberg, I let me see. Okay, do, are you using a footstool of any sort, John? Oh, uh, wait, can't hear you. You unmute you. John, are you I using that? Uh, can you hear me? I'm calling on my yep. phone because yeah. I couldn't get yeah, the audio. I got you. I got you. I'm hearing you. Yeah, are you using a footstool? Uh, I'm using an alternative, yes. Okay. Like books. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, that's pretty good. 
Might even want to go a tiny bit higher, but but we'll see how it works out. Okay, John, Oscar, that looks very good. Don, your leg might even be up a little too high. Um, John, Oscar, yeah. Uh, I would try lowering that a little bit. Is that a footstool? Mm -hmm. Oops, let me unmute you. Is that a footstool? Huh? It's a it's a yoga block sitting on top of a guitar. Okay. <laughs> I just uh, I just dropped my foot down. Okay. I think that's better. The better. Okay. Yeah. When that angle's too severe on the leg, it, it can cause you some pains. Okay. Okay. Matthew, that looks good. Okay. Oh, uh, Jerry Nyman, I can you back up a bit, Jerry, so I can see uh, more you and the guitar. Okay, I'll still need to see a little lower down. I can't see your right hand. We're going to do right hand today. And, uh, I'm going to do that. Yeah, I don't know if your camera can come down any so I can see that right hand. That's good. Yeah, that's good. Okay. That's good. Very good. Okay. Uh, Dave, I don't have a video on you. I don't think to get a picture. Okay. Yeah, you must have a, not a great uh -huh. No, it's not there yet, so. Um. Maybe you have a bad connection or something. Elaine, uh, oh, Elaine, are you in a car? I am traveling right now. Okay. Um, so I do have my guitar with me, so maybe in a little bit I'll be able to join in, but I didn't okay. just, just That's listen. Fine. That's fine. I used to keep a guitar in the car and practice while I was driving with the, with the neck out the window, but. Oh, there's an idea. <laughs> 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 when uh, it was hard to find practice time. <laughs> okay, all right, so we're going to um, begin with training the right hand. And uh, we'll probably be able to begin the left hand too today. Now, holding, we're, we're going to start pick style. We are going to be covering fundamentals of. Uh, finger style as we go along. We're going to do all the uh, cool techniques that you need um, for, easy, whoops, for easy finger style playing. We're going to cover uh, the basic exercises that will give you individual control of, uh, of each finger. That's a more complicated process. Train these things here for finger style than um, pick style. So that's where we're going to start with pick styles. But we will get into the finger style in the beginning. And as you probably already figured out in this class, we're not going to be doing any music. We're going to be working only on uh, fundamental technique for the two have control of your fingers and the practice process itself so you know what to do when you sit down to practice however we will uh just to give you an idea it's always okay, nice. anyone come up on it <laughs> it's always nice to know uh where you're headed with things so okay i'm hearing apparently not Oh. I'm going to play for you. Uh, this is a. Because you're not on Facebook or anything. No, not, not about Facebook, okay. I'm hearing a conversation somewhere. Anyway, um, this is where we will lead to eventually. This is one of my stage three students. 
who went through the stage one and the stage two. And just to give you an idea of what the hands look like. Oh, wait. So that's nice control of the fingers, and that's what we are going for. So let's begin with uh, how to hold the pick and bring it to the strings. So when it comes to using a pick for what we're going to do now, I would recommend, well, I would recommend uh, a small pick like this. If you don't have one, you can try it out later on, get yourself one of these smaller picks. But you definitely want to use a pick, even if you use a regular size pick like this, do not use for these exercises a medium type pick, one that gives. We don't want a pick that you can bend. Okay, those picks are good for strumming when we get to strumming chords. But for the extra time to, to develop technique, we're going to be playing single notes across the string. We're going to be doing the right hand string shifting exercise where we down and up picks on each string. And we're going to learn to really place a lot of force on the string in a controlled way. And for that reason, we don't want the pick to bend. So try to use a thick enough pick that doesn't give as it goes over the string. <coughs> now, the way to hold the pick in your fingers is if you, if, you, if you put your index finger out like this and then you lay the pick on the index finger so that the point of the pick is, is going where your finger's pointing. And then you bring your thumb over it like this. And these two fingers, okay, so the thumb is perpendicular to the index finger, okay, like that. And then the pick goes in there like that. The small pick is nice because there's not a lot of stick that sticks out over the pick itself. And that gives you better control. Now, yeah. is everybody good with that, with holding the pick? Everybody feel like you know what you're doing? Yeah. Yep. Everybody want me to? Okay, good. Uh, so the hand and the arm, let's talk about the hand and the arm as they're holding the pick. The position for the hand and the arm, when we use a pick, is quite different than when we do finger style. When we do finger style, we're going to have the arm on top of the guitar like this. When we do pick style, we're going to be over the guitar. The best way to get into the position is to put your arm like this. You can hold the pick and put your arm like this. And then bring it back here. Now the key points here are my arm is flat to the guitar. My hand's not out like this. That'll be finger style. I'm flat and very importantly, I'm straight. I'm not like this. I'm straight like this and you know, a straight line here. And we're going, and you should do this, what I'm doing right now. Move your arm from the elbow up and down while you're holding the pick. We're gonna use from the elbow to the pick to the fingers. It's going to be a pick center. It's going to be like one motion. Okay. So we're not gonna be moving from the wrist here like this. There's a number of movements that are possible with the arm. Okay. You can move from the elbow like this while all this is held straight. That's what we want. You could move the wrist like this. That will be added later, and different players have different styles 
of how much risk they use. There's also forearm rotation like this. This we really don't want at this point, especially. Okay, we don't want that motion. We only want this going up and down. So if everybody do that motion for me, I wanna check it out. Okay, looking good. All right, good. Now, a few details about how the PEC actually interacts with the string or contacts the string. We'll go close up here. And these are very important things too. See, I can, I can have the pick go flat and straight to the string. It's laying right on the string. I'm using this picture so you can see it better. Okay, so here it's flat, laying on the string. We don't want that. What we want is to turn slightly like this. See the hand, same position, it just, the, the, the thumb and the index finger turn slightly so that the pick comes at an angle to the string. And so it kind of slices the string. So on a down pick, it's that on a up pick, it keeps the same like that. Okay, that's how it's going to be used. Not flat like this, but to the angle like that. Does everybody understand that? Any questions on that? <clears throat> okay. Are you hitting the string with the um, kind of the edge of the pick? Yes, that's what it is. It's the edge of the pick. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So not the full, not the full surface of the pick. Um, it. Good players, I mean, there may be a time where somebody wants to be flat on, but for the most part, you want to reduce the surface area, okay? Because that promotes speed and ease in playing. Yeah. I'm going to go through the uh, first three steps of the right hand string shifting exercise. We'll do these together. And this is, we're not even going to hit any strings. We're just teaching the arm how to move the hand the full range of the strings. This ensures that the arm is nice and relaxed and able to, able to do its job. So hold the pick. Again, I'm going to use this pick that I'm telling you not to use. This is better because it's light. Um, hold the pick, plant it slightly. Bring it to touch the first string. The first string, by the way, is the bottom one, the skinniest one. Call it the first string because it's the highest sound. This is be the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. Okay, so touch, just touch the first string of the pick. You're not even going to play. Notice I keep these fingers out. I don't keep them like this. You want the fingers out on the pick hand. Okay, and now I want you to just focus on your shoulder, put your attention here, and make sure this stays relaxed, and then slowly move from the elbow and bring the pick up to the top, well, <laughs> again, it's the bottom string, but it's closest to the ceiling. It'll be the lowest sounding string. So now I'm at the sixth string. So first string to sixth string, very slowly. And the arm moves from the elbow and doesn't really change. It's just, okay, and now I'm gonna let it float back down. And you must be aware of your shoulder being relaxed and your breathing. Do not stop your breathing. The body will want to tense in various ways doing this simple thing. Now, when you sit down to practice, you should do this like no more than twice, but very, very slowly like that. And now the second step, I'm going to touch each string with the pick. I'm going to float to the second string and just touch it. And now I'm going to float to the third string and just touch it. Again, I'm feeling my shoulder because 
The arm coming up like this means that the bicep is contracting. The bicep is connected all the way up here, as is the tricep. So you will tense up here just because you're doing this, unless you pay attention and relax it. You may even stop breathing. And now I'm gonna go back down and just touch each string. So I'm giving my arm the experience of what it feels like to move the hand and the pick to where each string is supposed to be. And I'm teaching you to do that in a very relaxed way. That should be done about two times, nice and slow. So both those things will only take about two minutes to do. You can just touch each string. And now we come to the third step of this exercise. And this is where the, oops, just realized I'm going to my mic on. Okay. Probably hear me better now. Um, this is where the rubber meets the road here. Okay, is when we actually put force on the string and set the string into vibration. And I want to go a little more deeply into this concept. So we are going to look at uh, a few things here. It's a very important concept called the cycle of the note. Is everybody seeing that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Now, this is what happens in your body every time you play a note. Most people, well, I would probably say all people that begin guitar are completely unaware of this. Some may feel it on an intuitive level, and that's good. Those people become good players. When you touch the string, you're at the bottom of this cycle of the note. Your arm and your whole body should only have as much tension as is required to hold the pick and bring it to the string. There shouldn't be any extra tension. And you always have to check for that because it's very easy to have the shoulder tense or the hand over tense and not know it. So we, at the beginning of the cycle of the note, we must be completely relaxed as we touch the string. The second uh, step in the cycle is where we begin to place force on the string. So that, that first part there, that's what we just practiced when we did step one and two. When we begin to place force on the string, this is a critical point because the string is an elastic medium. It stretches. That means that, that it's going to put force back on you. Okay? I, if I push on the string, it pushes back at me. Because it's pushing back at me, I have to tense certain muscles in order to hold my position. And if you, if you take your pick and you put it on the string, say put it on the first string as we did before, and you just begin to push a little bit and you pay attention to your hand holding the pick and your shoulder, you'll feel them tense up a little bit. Yeah. Can everybody feel that? Yeah. Okay. Now, when you stop the, the pressure on the string, stop the force being put, you should relax again. Now, what most people do when they begin, just about everybody, because this won't be explained to them, they'll, when they play their first note, they'll put the tension on the force on the string, their body will tense like that. And they'll go and play the note. And they will not release that tension. They will hold that tension in the arm because it's very subtle. And then when they go to play the next note, they will be, be beginning that note with that tension. And that begins a downward spiral in one's development on the guitar. So that is why I'm explaining this to you up front. And it's something I'll be constantly referring to, this cycle of the note. And how important it is to feel that tension that goes into the body with each note. At the point of highest force, that's the top of the cycle of the note. 
That's where you have the highest amount of force on the string and the body will be at its maximum tension reaction. Then you will play the note on the fourth part of the cycle and that is where you must release all effort as the note is played. As we do the right hand string shifting exercise, we're gonna very consciously feel the cycle of the note. So I will bring the pick to the string and you can all do this with me. Bring the pick to the string, make sure you slant it and then begin to place force on the string, push down on the string slowly, feel the reaction of the arm and don't play the note. Just, okay, James Ridgel, I'm seeing your arm and you're doing this, you're, you're moving from the wrist. You're not placing the arm. Yes. Like that. Okay. Major difference. Right. Okay. Uh, Chris Thompson, your hand is kind of like this. You should get, we, we don't want this. We don't want the wrist pushed into the guitar. We want straight here. And yes, better, better. Okay. That's good. Yeah, I'll fix these little things as we go along. Now, if you push slowly on the string, you feel that arm tension occur. If you stop right there where you have tension on the string, pressure on the string, you stop. That's the, that's the top of the cycle of the note. You should stop there and breathe. Yeah, sometimes we slip and just play the note. So that, that, that's part of training the arm. It's very good to stop and pose here. Okay, just relax with the force on the string and relax your body as much as you can while you have that pressure on the string. And that helps the body learn how to do this with, with as little effort as possible. Now, when I actually play the note, I want to feel all that tension that I'm feeling right now before I play the note. I want to feel it leave. It's good to do it on an exhale. It's good to put the pressure on the string and inhale and then play yep, and just let all that tension out. Okay. That's what the feeling should be. You touch the string. When you touch the string, you should feel like the pick is like a butterfly landing on a flower. It's that light. And then you begin to press on the string and you feel the body's reaction and you, you should stop there and relax and then get ready to release all the tension like it's coming out like a puff of smoke, like with the sound, you release all that tension. Now, now we're going to do an up pick on the first string. And I bring the pick so that it's now touching the underside of the string. And now an up pick is an entirely different animal than a down pick. Because when I put pressure on the string for an up pick, I'm pushing the string up toward the ceiling. Okay, before I was pushing the string down toward the floor. And you know, that meant too, if, this is interesting, if you, if you take your, arm, your other arm and you put it back here and you feel your tricep, you'll feel it tense up as you push on the string because the tricep extends the elbow. When you do the up pick and you put force on the string, you'll feel your bicep right here tense up as you push. And you should really push. I'm going to train you to put maximum force on the string because that is essential for proper development. And it's one of the things that goes wrong with, with most students is they don't put maximum force on the string when they practice. So if I come to the the pick, the string with the pick, or the up pick, and I start pushing the string up. The string is now pushing my arm down. That's why my arm has to tense. But now I'm gonna relax, and then I'm going to play the note and release all the effort. Now, in this exercise, we're gonna go down on the first string, and then we're gonna go up on the first string. And then we're gonna go down on the second string and then up on the second string. And because we're gonna do that, we have to be aware of a very important concept 
<clears throat> called The Complete Stroke. When you pick a note, you always want to leave the pick where it's going to be used next. Okay? Guitar players, we think like, we think like pool players, okay? An expert pool player, when they take the first shot, they know how to leave, they're already planning the second shot. And they know how to leave the cue ball right where they want it for that second shot. And then they do it again and they leave it. They're always leaving the cue ball where they want it to be for the next shot. We're always leaving the pick where we want it to be for the next note. So when I pick a note, I pick this, uh, this down pick, I'm not gonna let it travel far. I'm gonna be thinking of what it has to do next. And since it's going to do an up pick on the same string next, then when I do my down pick, I'm going to stop it right there. Now, when I do the up pick, and I know that the next note is going to be a down <clears throat> pick on the second string, this up pick is gonna work like this. I'm gonna pick the note, the pick is gonna go over the, second string and land right on it. So when you do this up pick, you should think of the motion this way. The motion is this, it goes up and lands on that string. And you should think of that as one motion. You shouldn't think of it as two motions like this. It's not, I go up here and then I go to the string. I'm going to, in one motion, that's where the, that's now the stroke is over. That's the complete stroke. Now, that is going to, if you make sure that you do that, <laughs> when you do your no tempo practice, that phrase, by the way, is one of the most important phrases that you're gonna know, because that means super slow practice, where we make sure that everything is correct. That is the foundation. That's going to be the foundation of, of your ability to play fast. It will be the foundation of your ability to, to build skill. Many of you may make the mistake as we go along of thinking that you only do no tempo practice in the beginning. And I will disabuse you of that notion because no tempo practice is something we do all the time. <clears throat> we return to it all the time. It's an, it's, what we're gonna mostly do today. Super slow with everything correct. So here's my third step of the right hand string shifting exercise. And here's where I really don't like to use this pick because I can feel it bend. See, it? I really don't want it to bend because I wanna put maximum force. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back to this pick, it doesn't bend here. And now, you see how much force I'm putting on the string? I'm moving that string. And that is what you want. You don't want to pick like this. You may play like that when you want a low volume, but here's a very important thing to understand. When you practice, most of your practice is going to be at a high volume because that, because volume means force on the string. And without placing the force, the muscles don't develop correctly. Okay. So, and we're going to train for being able to place maximum force on the string, and we're going to learn to control that. And that is where our that's where our ability to play fast and loud is going to come from. Somebody got a radio on or something? Can somebody stop whoever, uh... Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to go very slowly now, and you can do this with me because I'll talk you through it. We place the pick on that first string, and I'm gonna go through all the strings with a down and an up pick, but I'll think out loud what I'm, what I'm thinking and feeling, and this is what you wanna think and feel. So I'm on the string very lightly right now. Now I get my arm ready, because I know I'm about to put force on the string, and all this is gonna, and it's gonna have to tense up a little bit but I don't want it to tense any more than it has to. And I start to push on the string and I see that string move downward. And now the big moment, I'm gonna play the note and I have to immediately let go of all tension and hold the pick right under the string. 
And now I'm touching the string for the up pick and I'm pushing it up and I'm feeling that tension again, but it feels different because the string is pushing me down now. And I'm, now I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to play this note and I want the pick to land there. Okay. And I'm thinking about that and I'm planning that motion in my mind and now I'm going to do it. End up here. And a really good thing to do here is, is once you land on that string, is to bounce on it like this. Bouncing on the string. Okay, James Ridgel, again, I'm seeing your hand and it's, it, you're, you're not using your whole arm. You're just using from the wrist. We have to be careful. Yes, that's it, that's it, that's it. Okay, now I'm bouncing on this string. Bouncing is a wonderful thing to do because it relaxes the arm. I'm gonna now play a down pick on the string and I'm gonna stop the pick right under the string. And now I'm going to touch the string for the up pick. I'm pushing upward. The best thing you can do, it might be hard to do in the beginning, but eventually you want to be able to do this. Push the string all the way to the string. That makes it, that makes it harder to release the tension because there's more tension. It makes it harder to control. So you could start out with a little bit lighter than that, but eventually you want to be able to go like this. And then land on that string. And your down pick is what I call a full press. I'm pressing down on the string and it goes all the way to the next string. I'm going to play this note and then I'm going to control the pick and stop it right there under the string. That really builds great control. And now I'm doing the up pick. And each string feels different because each string is a different amount of uh, tension and I'm landing on top of the fourth string. <clears throat> I might bounce again just to, and I'm constantly checking my whole body. Keeping my shoulders relaxed. Keeping my belly relaxed. Keeping everything relaxed. And I'm pushing on the fourth string. Now I'm coming, now I'm coming here. Pushing all the way. Now this is what you want to be able to do at super slow, no tempo. Put the force on the string. Feel, feel the cycle of the note. And now down. Now you should do it from the first string to the sixth, and then from the sixth string back from the first. Take a break uh, along the way if you want, because it's a lot of uh, it's a lot of focus there. You know, to keep everyone on the straight and narrow, I want to take a minute and have everyone one at a time. You'll do it for me, and I want to see it up close. Okay, Marty, I'm, I'm going to just go across my screen here. So, Marty, yeah, go ahead. Just let me see a couple of strokes there. Good. Oh, well, go, go down then up on each string. Okay. Yeah, do it again. Good. Okay, everything's good. But you know what? I want you staring at your hand. Okay. Don't look. Don't look straight ahead. Okay. Be looking down there. Yeah. That's going to put you more into. Everything looks good. You probably could relax your shoulder more. I always can relax my shoulder more. <laughs> yeah, right. My tongue. And... and and let me also mention here. You're on a nylon string guitar. That's going to feel totally different than a steel string. It'll be steel string next week. It's in a different location. Yeah, the the uh, the steel the steel string has much higher tension, which actually makes it better to practice on because it makes the nylon feel like nothing, you know. So it actually is better training to be on um, on a on a steel string. Okay, very good, Sean. Let me check you out here. Good. Okay, good, good hand position. Uh, nice and straight, moving from the elbow. 
Everything looks good. Make, are you slanting the pick? Yeah. yeah, make sure you get that little bit of slant there. Okay, very good. Uh, Tom. You know, I, yeah, make the hand a little bit flatter. Yeah, not, we don't, we don't want like a cupping kind of thing going on, okay? We don't want like, um, avoid this kind of thing and get, make sure you're nice. And, okay, let me show you from this side. Okay, so avoid like um, this, bringing the hand out like this. Make sure you're flat like that, okay? And the fingers are out. Okay, Tom, do that again? Yeah, okay. That's good, that's good. Okay, do a couple of notes. Okay, you're having the tendency to move your hand. Yeah, right, you'll have to watch that. You're having a tendency to, to do this with your hand as opposed to keeping it more like that. So be careful of that. Yeah, right now your hand's too much down like this. It needs, you need to bring the thumb up so that the thumb is much straighter, with, yes, with the line of your forearm. Yes, much better. Much better ergonomics there. Good. Okay, Madeline, we're gonna give you a pass. I do need to see a doctor's note though, but. <laughs> I'll send you my surgery picture. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Grant, that looks real good. Yeah. You see what I'm saying about the thumb there? That nice, that straight line between, as you look from the tip of the thumb into the forearm. Good, good. Put a little more force there, Grant. Yeah, that's it. Good. Now do the up pick. Very good. And make sure, make sure on that up pick that you don't stop the motion until you're on top of that second string. When you put a second string, you have to go over top of it. I mean, yes. how, much does the pick, how much does the pick need to go over top of the second string? Well, it needs to go completely over. Okay, can everybody, can everybody stop for a sec? Everybody stop for a sec. So the question is on the up pick. I mean, the up pick has to travel over. Look, when I do the up pick, it's got to travel over. Now, what you, what you want to avoid is coming into the string like yes. this. So what you do is you imagine, okay, if you imagine a straight line connecting these two strings, okay, you don't want to travel the straight line. You want that straight line to angle upwards slightly over that string, okay? So I'm thinking about going over the top of the second string, like that, see? So you want the slope to be able to do a nice strong up pick, a nice strong up pick, but you land here, okay? You sail right over the top of that second string and you land on top of it. Does that answer your question? Yeah, it does, thank you. Okay, good. All right. Uh, Tasa, let me see what you got there. Okay, everybody else stop playing so we don't get, okay. Uh, your fingers are cupped into your hand. Extend your fingers. The fingers not yes. That's it. Just just extend them. You can, yeah. They don't have to be totally straight, but not cupped in. Okay, good. Play the first note. Good. Now the up pick. Try a little more force there. Uh, yeah. Try to move the string a little more than you are. Yes. I didn't hear you. Can you oh, try to move the string a little more than you are. Place just a little bit more force on it. Right. That's it. That's good. That's good. Now for the up pick, same thing. That's very good. See, that amount of force is good. If you don't put enough force, that you, the exercise simply doesn't benefit you as much. Okay, Rodney, it's a little hard for me to see you, but... I mean, let's see, because you're kind of in the dark, but that's okay. All right, play the first note. Good. Hold the fingers out. Hold the fingers out. 
Yes. Good. Much better. Good. Okay, good. Good. Um, every time I give a little correction like that, everyone should take note because there are there are things that everybody does wrong or, you know, half the people do wrong. Okay. They're just the common things. And you want to pick up on them. And, and when you see me, you know, correct somebody else, check yourself to make sure you're not doing the same thing. Okay, Chris, you. Very nice. Make sure you release that. Make sure you release that tension. Very nice. Very nice. Those are those are good strokes. Good. Okay, Jason, let me see you. Question for you. Um, the first knock on my thumb should be like yeah, that. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't. Yeah, it, it'll bend a little bit. Uh, I wouldn't. Well, you know, th this varies with people. I, for me, I like to keep mine with no bend. I, mean, I just noticed that it changes which angle of the pick. Yeah, it does. It does. I mean, yeah, to, to get the angle on the pick, I got to do a little bit of that. I would try to make it as simple as possible. Okay. I would try to make that. So you can also achieve that angle with a little bit of wrist movement. So I want the lower edge of the pick hitting the, the string I yes. down. Yes. No, you want to turn the pick toward the head. Yes, that way. That way. Okay. That's it. Yeah, that, that looks good. That looks good. Uh, Jason. Okay. A little more force. Don't stop breathing. Push the string. Make sure you push it before you, before you play it. Yeah. Okay, good. See the angle of that thumb right there, it's going to depend on the size of your thumb and stuff like that. Okay. So I think what you have there is good for your hand. And we can work with that. Make sure you put good force on the string. Okay. Okay. Uh, Rob. Okay, that is very good. Very good. Steph, let me see you. Okay, nice. Good position. See, see, your thumb is able to be straight like that. That works for you. Good. Maybe slant the pick a little more. I'm not sure if you have it slanted enough. Okay, good. Norbert, let me see you. Okay, very good. Very nice. I would extend the fingers a tiny bit. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Good, good. All right. Jim, let me see you. Yeah, see your angle back away from the screen. It's hard for me to see. You'd have to you'd have to turn your whole body on the that's it. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, extend the fingers. Good. Okay. He's staring at the pick. Are you staring at the pick? Yes. We are watching the fingers like a hawk here. Make sure you move the string before you play it. Make sure you see that string move. Okay, uh, James, we're doing, yeah. uh, fingers out, fingers out. Good, a pick. Good. Okay, that is good. Uh, Henderson? Fingers out, fingers out, okay. Give the push and release. Good. Now the up pick. Good. You sit on top of the next string. Good. Good. Keep aware of the breathing. Make sure you can you you keep your breathing even. We all tend to hold our breath. You'll tend to, at the top of the cycle of the note, the point of highest force on the string. You will tend to hold your breath. Okay, Keith. 
fingers out, fingers out. Okay, everyone notice how often I'm saying that, fingers out, <laughs> okay? That means like, put that on your list of suspects, things you probably do, that's good. Maybe bring that thumb up a little bit so you have, so you're straighter with the forearm. Yeah, yes, right, good adjustment, yeah. Okay, good. All right, John. Go ahead, John. Did you, did you say John? Yeah, John. Yes. Okay. Good. 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 Make sure you really relax in between. As long as you want, you know. That's what no tempo is. You take as long as you want. Okay, Matthew. Good. 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 Feel that elbow. Keep that shoulder relaxed. That's it. You see how that shoulder is going to accumulate tension? And it's going yes. to it's yes. gonna hold it there in between the notes. So you must check it after every note part of the releasing of that tension is releasing the shoulder okay you'll you'll see we'll get, we'll get that okay, jerry. jerry let me check you out jerry go ahead uh jerry bring your thumb up if you can your thumb yeah you're too angled down with the thumb what i was saying about keeping the keeping straight with the forearm I think you're frozen. I gotta get this in camera in a better position next time. Yeah, you got yeah. Yeah, I can't see it. See, I can't see enough of your arm. I need to see the whole arm in order to uh okay, but yeah, yeah, better like that. Okay, I'm running out of time, so I want to just get okay. to uh okay, Rick. Go ahead, fingers out, Rick, fingers out, and slant the pick. Slant the pick, slant the pick. Okay, do down pick. Okay, up pick. Okay, next. More force. Yeah, I hear, yeah, I can't actually hear the notes, but yeah. Uh, you're, you're, you're locking up your elbow. You're not moving from the elbow. You're, that's it, yeah, yeah, keep that elbow going there. Yes, make sure you keep that elbow going. Okay, Dennis, let me see you. Good. Stare down at the pick. Watch it. Good. Okay. Keep staring at the pick. Watch the pick as you practice. Yes. There's nothing happening straight ahead. The only thing that's happening is down there with your, with your pick and the string. So we want to watch that. Okay. Uh, David. Me see you, Dave. Dave? Yeah. Yep, me. Yep. It's a big moment. <laughs> your, your first solo spot. <laughs> All right. Good. Go ahead. All right. More force. You need more force. You need more force. Yeah, you're not, you're not, you're not. Okay, everybody else stop playing, please. You're not putting enough force on the string. You're not too light a stroke. Stop. Everybody else, stop playing, please. I can leave everybody anyway. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. Yeah, Dave, go ahead. Oh, I see. I got more than one Dave going on here. <laughs> okay, Dave, go ahead. Did again? That's it. Good. Okay, you need to press slower on the string and push the string more and move it more. You're going too fast. Yes, we have to use gradual pressure. If you have, the, and everybody, if you have the principal's book, read it because everything in there is going to mean more to you after every class. Okay, I talk in the principles about gradual pressure. We must learn in no tempo practice, we put gradual pressure. Okay, I wanna leave you with this now. You're gonna do all this when you sit down to practice. You can, after you go through it, no tempo, once or twice, 
you can begin to use the basic practice approach. That means that you're going to take the metronome, you're going to put it on 40, I mean 60, and you're going to play four clicks per note. So you're going to do everything the same as you just did. You're going to go. You're going to touch ahead of time. Push. One, two, three. The best thing is to touch the next string on three. To go like play, two, touch. The best thing you can do is go play, two, touch, bounce. If you do play, two, touch, bounce, it guarantees perfect action. That would be this. Play, two, touch, bounce. Play, two, touch, bounce. The bounce gets rid of static tension in the arm. Now, you do that at 60 at four clicks, then you do it 80 at four clicks, then 100 at four clicks. This is the practice routine, okay? It's no brainer, very simple, step by step, except you have to make sure you do everything exactly the way I'm saying. Now, what happens is you get to one click, because you'll go, it, it's in uh, chapter five of the principles, it's in the classroom, the basic practice approach. You go 60, 80, 100 at four, 60, 80, 100 at two, 60, 80, 100 at one. One click will look like this. Notice I'm still pushing into that string. And because I did all these slower speeds correctly, my body's nice and relaxed because it's releasing with every note. Now you then go 60, 80, 100 in one click per note, and then you switch to eighth notes, which some of you may need help with. That, that'll be counted one and two and. We are then going to build that up to 16th notes. And that is where your ability to, to play individual notes in scales and all other kinds of things, this is where it comes from. Okay? It's from getting all that into this side of the body. And that is where we're going to leave it for today. Everybody good? Any questions? Well, oh, I, got, I forgot I muted everybody. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm like, oh, good. Everybody's good. Nobody's saying anything. <laughs> Is everybody good? Any questions? Yes. Yes, Sean. Good. That's oh, good. good. Okay, good. All right. Yeah, I don't think I left anything out there, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've got one quick question. Yes. <laughs> Um, whenever, all right, we start off with the down, right? And then we come back up. But when we, when we come back from the six and go down to the first, do we, do we start with the down? Yeah, just keep it, it down up, keep it down up the whole way. Okay. All, all right. right. Yeah. Okay. So listen, you can post your practice. I want to try to keep, um, to, for each person to maybe like three posts, uh, per week in the Facebook page, unless there was something you're really stuck on. Okay. But you should post. Because if your progress depends on the process of feedback. You show me what you're doing. I tell you what's wrong. That's, what's, that's how you make progress. Of course, then you fix it and so forth. But without that feedback, you, you get stuck. So try to get in the habit of posting during the week what you're doing so I can see it. I'll write a comment, you know and you'll move faster because of it. All right, got to get on to my stage two class. Good to see you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See you next week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.